roll, but you know, we'll see how it goes. All right, here we go. Uh, going live. That started quick this time, and we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Crap, the Vlogcast. Vlogcast that comes from a skeptical point of view to answer some of the questions of why. This vlogcast started as a combination of spite and a Streisand effect to give me an excuse to be a dick to people who richly deserve it in order to get a point across to them. Okay, less being a dick, more just, you know, it's tough love. With a clue by four. It's, it's the way things, it's the way of the world. Sometimes it's just because the journey is more important than the destination. I'm your main host. I'm known as Shujin Tribble. You can find me pretty much everywhere under that name. That's S-H-U-J-I-N. And to, uh, to, to cover something really quickly before I introduce everybody, yes, the Borg Tribble picture has gone onto various timelines for me multiple times. I don't need it anymore. Thank you for your consideration. It's the thing on my birthday. Midwest of the U.S., Bridget Fitch. Hi. Hey. And off to the right on the East Coast, Unrenowned Tech. Good morning. Yeah, what's up? Good morning, uh, you too. Yeah, for the first time, uh, the temperature outside. You mean, you mean your snow is melting? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's pretty well terrible gone. news. I'm so sorry for you. Well, it gets to be kind of funny because for the for the majority of the week, and probably for like the last 10 days or so, it's been hovering around the freezing point, a little bit above it, pretty close to the freezing point. And yesterday it was uh, 8 Celsius over here. Uh, today it hit uh, 22 so yeah, and people say that climate change is not real. <laughs> it's it's just all kinds of all, all kinds of on the on the weird side. Uh, th now, see the the downside about the whole damn thing though is that, um, yeah, tiny dribble at college has kind of been a little under the weather, so to speak, because of seasonal, bleh, you know what I mean. So kind of like, not exactly cold, but kind of a cold because of, you know, the change of the weather. See, I've always been, um, I've, I've convinced myself a long time ago that I should have probably have moved to Alaska and picked up some kind of technical job or whatever up there. Just because, you know, when the seasonal disorder hits everybody because of the, the gray skies and the cold weather and everything else, I'm happy as a fly on shit. Because my allergies don't bother me. I love the cold. It's not so bright that my eyes are hurting me because I have, you know, photosensitivity. And it's, it's just one of those things where everybody else is miserable. I'm happy not because they're miserable. It just happens to be the season that I'm happy in. You know, like somebody who loves to dance through the rain while everybody else is running for shelter. Oh, I don't want to see you dancing in the rain. Especially I don't, if dance, wearing, in the, don't dance in the rain. Especially if you're wearing white clothing. I don't. Don't, don't do that. But it's going to be getting dance. warmer in Alaska no. than it is here, though. So <laughs> your planning plan may not work. Yeah, and, and I saw that snowfall for this season, there is more snowfall out here in the Buffalo market than there was in Anchorage. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> But I'm just saying, I don't dance in the rain. I pole dance in the snow. Well, or actually, I'm, I'm thinking to... about learning to twerk, though. You might want to move to Greenland then. Seriously. Wait, isn't Greenland green? I, th I thought it's Iceland is the place to go. Yeah, you can blame the Vikings for that one. It's all their fault. <laughs> so, hi, yes, yeah. I know. I'm, Greenland I'm just is really, being, really cold. I'm just being a, I'm just being a dupe. I, I know the difference between Iceland and Greenland. So, any people out there from Iceland or Greenland who uh, were upset by that statement. Well, uh, relax, chill out. No pun intended. No, forget that pun intended. Go play with something. It's not what I needed right about now. So hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to the show. <laughs> As always, if you want to join us live for the recordings, uh, feel free to over on YouTube. And, you know, we've got the live chat going on over there. So, Stephanie, good morning. Hope things are going well for you. And, uh... Phyllis, hi. Glad you're able to make it. Yeah, Stephanie's right. As a vision I can do without tech, I don't blame you. The fact that he said that he pole danced in the winter, 
considering shrinkage, I don't understand all that, but whatever, you know, it's perfectly fun. Well, when you're acclimated to the cold, it does, there is no shrinkage. Yeah, after a certain amount of uh, alcohol in your system, it all ends up like uh, antifreeze anyway, so it doesn't really much matter. Unless you're a frog. Well, we, we skipped spring altogether here and just went from, like, cold to summer. Just bam. Ew. <sighs> well, that sucks. Well, no, it is what it is. So anyway, hi, everybody. So it's going to be a fun night. We're uh, we're expecting that uh, Joey should be joining us. I, I say, should be is expected to be. He is uh, otherwise busy. Uh, de de deforest. He's blowing de shit up. He he's, he's, <laughs> he's doing he's doing uh, game uh, deforestations, and you know what? Uh, oh more oh god, yeah, he is. Is he running around with a chicken walker? Is that what it is? I don't know what it's... Um, it, it, the funny thing is, is while I didn't used to play the uh, online version that he's playing with all the factions and all that stuff, mm. I played 1, 2, and 3 back in the day. Uh, I even had, you know, the Logitech controller ideal for it, which had the three, you know, the wrist rotation, oh, joystick yeah, yeah, yeah. yoke, and, and the built-in throttle for those who couldn't afford the two separate pieces. So... Who out there remember serial port controllers? You know, raise your hands. You're my people. Yeah. So, you know, I get it. <laughs> it's still funny to watch a mech go walk in, you know, just just go for a brief walk through a forest, and suddenly there's no more forest because <laughs> that's where the mech went. Yeah, it's the way that it is. I'm pointing because, like, last weekend we had freeze warnings out at night right after our daffodils popped up, started getting freezes again. And it was 28 here today. Mm. Perfect. Bye bye, daffodils. Mm. I know they did. They they're gone. They mm. they froze and then they burned. You know what though? The ones that are left over, those are the ones that you can rename as the Darwin version, because they'll be the survivors. None of them survived, not a single one. They were obviously unworthy then. And, 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 to, to, mm. to quote the Klingons, today is a good day to die. Oh, they died horribly. Such they, happens. Yeah, they died an honorable death. They they're, stood their ground. They're, they're, <laughs> plants i don't i don't know honorable dishonorable doesn't really much matter well if they're frozen they're crunchy and if they're burned they're crunchy so they died a crunchy death they were pretty like three days ago and full of life and today they're shriveled and brown you know what you can do that was like my high school dating life you know what you can do <laughs> take him inside dry him out yeah and wrap them in cheesecloth and boil them and make tea. Let them go. have a worthwhile end. Uh, daffodil tea does not sound tasty. I don't think that making a salad out of weeds, but apparently my goddamned ancestors in Italy decided, sure, you know what? Um, Let's go ahead and... Dandelion, I don't, I don't know. Dandelion's not bad. You can eat the greens. You can make wine out of them. You can take the yellow flowers and fry them like okra. They're good. I, 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 I don't, hey, I don't, I don't. I, um, I'll back that statement 110%. Dandelion wine is the bomb. Love the that fried stuff. Fried dandelions are good. Wait, what? Fried dandelions. Fried? Yes. You take the, the yellow... You know, and, and you soak them in salt water for a little bit, and you roll them in a mixture of cornmeal and a little bit of flour, and you fry them like you would okra. Delicious. Oh, see, no, I've never done that. I've had the dandelion salad with the greens before, but I've never done... I, th that like, was me trying to be healthy. You if you like fried it? okra, you would love well, fried dandelions. No, okay. I don't like fried okra. Hold on a second. What is wrong with you? They're I'm a damn northerner. <laughs> Bridget, I'm a damn Yankee. Bridget, That's what. It's less than a two-hour show at this point. The question of what the hell is wrong with you, Tech, we don't have time for. Don't do this now. As an aside, by the way, Tech, 
We have talked before on the show about fried Coca-Cola syrup. You are not allowed to be surprised by anything being fried in the United States ever again. You know better than that. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead. That's what I thought. So do your show. <laughs> let's go ahead and go, do go, that then. I'm going to go sit in the corner. I looked up uh, information for Reef Badawi. Again, there's no new information. Yes, he has been released from prison, or so we have told. However, as of the recording of tonight's show, it has now been one month, 13 days since that supposed release, with no visible information to show his condition, like photos or video of any kind. This is supposed to be a normal but we are still hoping that this breaks before the supposed 10-year limit. I'll have to wait on that. So, let me get things started with the 5-Minute uh, uh, Freestyle. We'll come back with Horrible Scopes, because I actually worked on them. Thank you very kindly. We'll deal with that. So, let's get you rolling over here. With 5 minutes on the clock, your freestyle is now Demidecade. There are some people who looked at that title and were just like, eh? And I, I, I get that. <laughs> I get that. I don't particularly like Facebook, but it's it, it serves a purpose as a tool. It is a tool, but it, it has a purpose. And part of that is a little bit of community. It's not the best community by any stretch of the imagination, but then again... What is? Five years ago. I got a memory come up from five years ago. Five years ago was a great weekend. It was a very long weekend. It was a very, uh, very, I'm not sleeping a lot weekend. It was a, I'm meeting a lot of people I've never met before weekend. I had a weekend of I'm going to watch my friend to make sure that he's okay being an MC weekend. I had a weekend of getting to watch a proposal weekend. I had a weekend of my buddy is sick. Could you sign this form so that we can send it off to him? Thank you. I had a weekend of meeting people that I don't know how they necessarily feel about me or what I do, but I'm not finding a problem with that. I had a weekend of watching my kid give me an absolutely incredibly joyous look when he heard this is cognitive dissonance. Every episode we five years ago was reason gone. And we had a great time. There was a lot that we got to do in the line of just meeting people. It's been five years. And the funny part of it is, at the very end of it all, at the very end of it all, uh, technically after it was all done, I got the last few people, the last few stragglers, to do a video, a selfie video, to say goodbye to say that we would be looking forward to seeing folks again, you know, as soon as Reason Con comes around again, and we were expecting perhaps two years or so, but we got the last stragglers, and the last, one of the last things that we said as a group was, thank you, Gene. Gene was the guy that helped get it all together. He, he made it happen, man. And he talked about it on Facebook at one point, not too very long ago. And I went looking through my uh, my YouTube collection. I'm just like, you know what? Here, just to remind you how cool everything was. And I forwarded it. He had not seen it. Four years later, almost, almost five years later, he had not seen that video. He didn't know that video existed. He didn't know that the very, very last people that were there in Hickory specifically called him out and said thank you. 
took almost five years. And how cool is that? To find out five years later that there is a message that's just been waiting for you. That message in a bottle, digitally that it might be, was suddenly waiting there for you all this time and you didn't know about it. And suddenly, holy crap, there it is. We had a great time. It was my first opportunity of getting to, actually, it was the only time so far that I've had the chance. No, 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 I take that back. It was the first time. Not the only time, but the first time getting the chance to meet Bridget. It was a great time. Gave her a gave her gave her a t-shirt. And 2007, I went to Anthrocon and realized that I had 5,000 close, warm, personal friends that I had just never met before. And then I went down to ReasonCon and there were a bunch of other people that Again, close, warm, personal friends that I just never met before. I'm not completely close with all of them, most of them. But for a brief moment in time, we shared a wonderful experience together. If we get to do it again, I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure that we get there. The show will be represented you people are worth it. Episode 405 on the docket, Your Honor. Get beside me, Satan. Oh, my God. For those of you that didn't uh, check up on the show information, over there in Pennsylvania, there is another school district that has absolutely lost its shit because the situation the, the, the Satanic Temple has uh, been asked, hey, we'd love for you to uh, start a after-school Satan club because in my school district, we've got uh, these uh, Christian groups. So uh, we'd like to start one up over here. Cool. All right. And the populace lost their collective minds. They didn't just lose their minds. They voted no. Yeah, and yeah. Lucian Greaves, mm. uh, which one of these days I'd love to get him on. I, I, I should really specifically invite him. Lucian went ahead and said, and rightly so, the fact that they were having a vote by the school board itself shows that they don't know what the hell they're doing. I'm <laughs> highly paraphrasing right here. Mm-hmm. And he was right. But we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a talk about this one because we've done it before. It's been a little while. I, I think it's worth doing again because, oh my God, some of the commentary that uh, that uh, holy crap the vlogcast got involved with, <laughs> we may end up having some more people watching the show tonight specifically because of that. And you know what? To all of you people, mwah, welcome to the show. I wish I still had his contact information because I used to have it. For Lucian or yeah. for uh, Reap? For Lucian, like in case of emergency, break glass, come down here and uh, create some chaos. Fair enough. Because he would love to. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's no longer on, you know, Facebook any anymore i guess for reasons i don't know but uh, yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't totally surprise me but he had he's come to the state a few times to raise some you know good trouble and that was one thing that he and i had talked about you know a while back was uh coming down here to hand out some of the kitty you know some of the activity books to the kiddos here at the local school district yeah, it'd be really, for free. it'd be really interesting for 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 me if I would have. I don't I don't remember if there's a sidewalk or if it's just the uh, the walkway, but if I were to walk along the the public section of of the street in front of the high school, and and have a you know a sandwich board, and and have the 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 stuff free to to give to the kids. That'd be that'd be freaking wild. But you know what. Let's You'd wind see. up in jail. 
I, he's he's been here a couple times, possible. not locally, but at the state level, especially when they were doing the first the uh, oh crap, what was it called? The first Church of Cannabis. Ooh. The Cannabitarians. Uh, <laughs> he came down here for that one because that was a religious, you know, freedom thing. That uh, yeah, after River passed and all that, and uh, one of my friends wanted to start a church up there in Indianapolis, and uh, they got to start their church. But he he was here for the festivities, and he had said, told me, you know, hey, uh, if you need me to come down there, I'll be glad to bring some books for the kids at uh, a couple of the schools here. Brilliant. Considering it's, <laughs> considering it's a PDF that anybody can print off. It's yeah. true. Well, anybody no, can do was, it. Well, he was actually going to like bring copies of the books for free and nice. hand them out to some nice. of the kids at the school. Oh, he was going to do the professional prints. prints. That's very cool. Yeah. 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 God, I'm just imagining having a, a run of them done over at the local kinkos and and go over there and they're just like oh, i don't know that we're really supposed to do this but you know. not if he would mind or not i mean that might be copyright infringement but yeah he had volunteered well to if down he here owns with... it well i mean he owns it but it, i think we'd have to ask well if if okay yeah if, if we See, here's to... the thing if, if... so if you go to staples or kinkos or something like that uh -huh. and you have verifiable printed authorization yeah. that you are allowed to make X amount of copies, X being any number from, you know, between one and infinity. Yeah. Then legally they can't stop that printing. Um, they may refuse to help you and for, and point you towards a self-serve hoping that you're not technically apt enough. Cause let's face it. Like when's the last time you actually saw somebody successfully program a VCR who isn't in the IT industry? Um, sorry. I'm sorry. Forget VCR, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever. Forget it. But the point is, yeah. When was the last time you met somebody who actually knew how to turn off and on a cable box without calling com the cable support company? That's a better analogy. Well, so, it's just I wouldn't deign to do so without his blessing. Right, but I'm just saying. Say you had his blessing. Depending on what town you're in and what state of wherever. You're either going to get the, somebody who goes, eh, do whatever you want, or the, oh, that's kind of cool. What's it all about? Or the other, get that heathen shit out of here. Yeah. Down here would be, get the heathen shit out of here because uh, mm -hmm. at the county over from us, uh, the TST did adopt a highway, <laughs> and people lost their shit. It made the news here. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't you can't adopt a highway? Sure, we can. There's nothing in the law that says we can't. Exactly. And they did in Newburgh, and people lost their shit all sure. over the tri Because they don't Europe. understand. That's why. We, I know they don't understand. They don't want to understand. We do, we, do have to, uh, we do have to get over to the horrible skulls, but two things really quickly. Uh, first off, are same-sex couples allowed to adopt part of a highway? I would love to see that happen. And two, Ooh. finally being able to join us, Joe, good morning. How the hell are you? We heard that you were deforesting whole sections of area. How are you? Or maybe you are not there. You are muted. You're not muted. You don't have audio. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you work with free. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I got wrong, I, Joe. It's Joseph and not Joey. I looked at the wrong damn thing. I am terribly sorry, Joseph. When you're able to put things together, I'm sorry. I looked over really quickly and I, <laughs> I screwed up. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Anyway, we'll get the we'll get the horrible scope started, and uh, we'll see we'll see how this plays out. So, 
as stated, it is time for the Horrible Scopes. For those of you that know what your astrological signs are, cool. If you don't, uh, roll a d12, make it up as you go along, doesn't matter. Ask your smart device to pick one for you. It's really not going to make too much of a difference. I'll get you rolling. Aries, t-shirts are made mostly of cotton for two good reasons. First, you can make company merch printed ones for free, or alternatively cheap. And second, you can't fold creases into it like you can polyester. As a demonstration, get a Canadian $5 bill and crease it. There you are, one moment. And then try to uncrease it. It's easier than trying to fold a Canadian $1. Trust me on this one. And before we move on, Joseph, you made it. Uh, yeah, you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Excellent, wonderful. Okay, sorry. No worries. Bridget, all yours. Chris, don't own more than two sets of bed sheets. One set should always be on the bed, while the other sits waiting in the clean laundry pile. You will go insane trying to fold that fitted sheet. Can you imagine what Niagara Falls hotel staff are like with heart-shaped fitted sheets? Be kind to yourself and remember this. Gemini, your love of Marvin Hamlish is off-putting. We know Trekkies and Trekkers, Bronies and Whovians, but what do we call people like you who love Marvin's work, but not enough to remember he died in 2012? Casual. Commit to your quirks already. Cancer Moonchild, you've been questioning your sanity and we can put your fears to rest. Yes, in the 70s there really was a lollipop made by the Spangler Ca Candy Company. Spangler Candy Company in the shape of a whistle. They were discontinued for a long time, but a new company, Choyachup, have bought them back, calling them Melody Pop. Buy some to give out to the kids of parents that you hate, since, you know, buying those kids recorders play is too obvious. I loved those pops as a kid. I actually they had did to do... work. Yes. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they got better as you... Okay. As you I... sucked on them? I... Okay, I, I I was trying to find a more delicate way of putting it, but sure, yeah, that's 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 the correct way of wording it. I actually had to do actual goddamned research to find out about those because, um, after we get done, I'll explain really briefly how these things are put together, and, and then you guys can go ahead and, and have a little bit of fun at my expense. Did whistle? Yeah. Ever. Leo. Before you think there are musical instruments you that can't get you chicks if you're performing concerts, let us remind you that Liberace, Elton John, and Freddie Mercury all played piano. Which just goes to show you, pianists have to date whoever they can because of their instrument, which is still better than the lack of attention the bass player gets. Okay, as somebody who plays bass... Uh... uh it's kind of true. Depends on the bass player. Depends on the band. A bass player who looks like me playing in a community big band. Uh, yeah, I wasn't exactly um, popular. It's saying that John Entwistle, before he was dead, I'm sure he didn't have any problems getting chicks. Just saying. Fine. Moving on. Speaking of chicks, no, here comes Joe. Well, wonderful. We'll uh, we'll add you momentarily. Bridget, your turn. <laughs> Virgo, you want to complain about it all snowing, even though we're past the vernal equinox in Sweden? Meteorologists define the beginning of spring as the first occasion on which the average 24-hour temperature exceeds zero degrees Celsius for seven consecutive days. Meaning, spring isn't a date so much as its realization that Mother Nature is a fickle bitch. <laughs> Libra, one nice bribe for you coming up, Libra. In the 70s, it wasn't just unusual but fashionable 
for men to wear dress shirts open to mid-chest level, showing off all kinds of male cleavage and curly hairs. We think you're still in shape enough to single-handedly bring this fashion statement back. Even you ladies. Joseph? Yes, sir. Scorpio. Oh, no. Second. No. There's a Joseph. Oh, yeah. Then Joey. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Sorry, things are a little screwy. This is what happens when I run a uh, stream with delay on it. Uh, where were we? Well, you're gonna have to Scorpio. Wait. You're gonna get Sagittarius oh. because Joseph, you get Scorpio. I'll catch you. Joseph? Joseph? Possibly. What the hell happened? Sorry. There you no, are. I was muted. Jesus. All right. Um, yeah. Scorpio, car troubles lie in wait for you this week. Yes, you can Tokyo drift easier in the rain with those old racing slicks. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Driving a 21st century vehicle, not a 1974 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am 455. Though that was a sweet ride. That was a sweet ride. That that really was. You should look at pictures of that. Joey, now you get to pick it up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sagittarius. We don't mean to scare you, but... It's only six months until Halloween. You pushed it off until the last month last year. Don't make that mistake again this year. Break out the smoke machines and make sure they're still working correctly. Ditto the sound effect systems. Don't do it at three in the morning after sleeping, uh, after slamming a triple strength pot of coffee. Did Man. you have a triple strength pot of coffee? Uh, you know, considering the irony of that, yeah. <laughs> I I did have a neighbor I would have loved to do this to, but he moved out, so. <laughs> Capricorn, here's some facts you might not know. And no, I'm not going to explain this one. His middle name is Matthew. He's of Yugoslav Ital-English descent. He graduated high school as a straight-A student at 16 has a degree in architecture. His poodle, named Bella, was on one of his album covers and used to work at 91.3 KCPR, 310 flaming watts of FM power. Come on, you know who this is. And for those of you that do know, don't spoil it for anyone else. Aquarius. It's been 31 years, and we still don't understand how Ariel didn't have some idea of what a fork is. Shouldn't she have seen it like we see a dagger is just a small sword? I mean, a spoon to mare folk would be a tool for scooping sand and not drinking soup. It's, you know, underwater and all. But go find your VHS copy of The Little Mermaid and donate it somewhere. We had a long discussion about that one last night. You know, Poseidon's got a Poseidon's got a trident. It yeah. kind of looks like a fork. A really big fork. But a fork should look like a dagger compared to like a long sword. You know, just whatever. You know, it's fine. Yeah, it makes sense to me. <laughs> Pisces. Yeah. Bloom County's Bill the Cat was designed to have the most repulsive, vile, disgusting, unattractive design so that he could never be loved for his looks or wanted to be turned into a stuffed animal for marketing. And yet, just like Billy, people love your looks no matter how you think you look to the world. So long as there are ophthalmologists... There will be people who like the way you look. To Bill the Cat. Billy the Cat. And those are your horrible scopes for this week. Remember, if you like what you got, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not trying hard enough. 
Uh, but if you would like a nicer or alternatively a, a nastier one for yourself or someone else, you can bribe me by getting in contact with me and letting me know. Remember, I need to know which sign and which way to go. And I'll have these posted online all over the place at the end of the week when I work on the next ones. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, all that. Yes, I have a Tumblr. Leave me alone. I think you're going to have to try a little harder on Pisces next week to kind of make up for this week. Because that's kind of like the Pisces one was an offhanded compliment. They're all offhand compliments. <laughs> Just saying, it wasn't, wasn't very... Uh... Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give you guys a little bit of a... a the seeing the sausage kind of thing really quickly when I'm it used to be it used to be that I would use a horoscope generator and look at the stuff that was randomly coming up and glomming onto a couple of phrases here and there and and reworking them entirely in my own way but I have used that so many times that I keep seeing the same things over and over again. So believe it or not, what I do now is I turn on my Plex server and tell it to just randomize my music collection. And whatever song comes up starts inspiring me. And I work off of that. You know, you're going to get mm-hmm. much different. You're going to get much very, uh, a lot more varied results with that process because uh, here, here's a little secret that a lot of the population doesn't know. Horoscopes, they're all the same. Yeah, because they're all bullshit. Uh, by the way, so that you understand that last one for Bloom County's Build the Cat, that one happened because the song Billy from Billy and the Boingers you think, <laughs> but I love you, came up. One of the greatest... I'm not laughing at the name. It's just as soon as you said the band, I'm going, oh, he didn't. He did. He did. <laughs> Billy and the Boringers. Well, huge as your music, music collection is, that should give you enough for oh, a few hundred years of these. Hun, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> when 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 somebody wants to go ahead and be a, a, a cute son of a bitch to me and and they're just like um dj rule zero <laughs> uh how for those of you that are of a certain age this will make perfect sense for you <laughs> free bird okay. oh you terrible bastard you free bird it is even said the dj rule zero to me numerous times free... the worst part about free birding it is when you do the full intro no, but see, Joe will tell you, I have a version of Freebird in the style of bluegrass. Yeah. Okay, I'm I would listen to that exactly one time just to hear what it was like, <laughs> but I'd probably kill you afterwards. My... The Sijin's done crap like that to me with, like, Calliope music versions of stuff. And he's like, you didn't specify the artist. That's right. <laughs> My best, my best, my favorite. That's how it works. My <laughs> absolute favorite currently, currently, is we're not going to take it from Twisted Sister, <laughs> done by a mariachi band with D. Snyder. Oh, that sounds awesome! It actually works. It actually got. I could see that working. That sounds like it would be awesome. It is fun as hell. It is. It is absolutely. It, it is. It is wonderful. Yes, you can find it on YouTube. I <laughs> sure I have no idea where I found it at all, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's actually it, it is actually seriously worth it. There are a couple. Oh, he's you know he's he's done uh, D Snyder. This is completely separate from everything for a second, although it kind of ties yeah. in. D Snyder has done a lot of really good stuff over the years. Yeah. He has admitted that there are things that he's done specifically and strictly for the money. Cause when somebody offers you, you know, like $300,000 for your song, that is what you say is your baby. You, your usual answer to that is, do you want me to come in and sing it for you? Cause I mean, you know, $300,000 is nothing to sneeze at, but, um, he, when, 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 uh, I hate to I hate to put it this way, but when American Republicans have been um, 
claiming that his music has been really touting the whole, um, you know, traditional, uh, traditional values in America. And he dunks on them on Twitter and laughs in their faces, so to speak. Yeah. He's good people. D. Snyder is really good people. Well, this is kind of tied into just the random music stuff, and I don't know how you could do this for your show. You probably couldn't. But the funniest one I've ever seen Hold, yet, hold his beer. <laughs> hold his beer is uh, somebody doing the Songsmith versions uh, with the... Um, one of my friends, her favorite song growing up was uh, Running With The Devil from Van Halen. Okay. And somebody did a Songsmith version of it, and it sounds like David Lee Roth is like a drunk lounge singer. It's just horrible. <laughs> it is terrible. So, basically doing Just a Gigolo. Got it. Okay. It's fine. He wasn't oh, doing Just a Gigolo. It was just slowed down. It had just the vocals with this really cheesy piano music stuff in it. It's just hilarious. No, it's, it's, I, it's fine. If you've never seen it, you have to see it at least once. But she was like, I will hate you the rest of my life. <laughs> Remind me about it later. I'll, I'll have to go hunting it down. Uh, so, let's go ahead and talk about this. The news story made its way over to me because I was uh, I, I was scrolling through various timelines, as, as I do. You know, I, I don't remember if it was uh, from Twitter specifically. I think it was. Uh, it might have been from. Uh, I you know what I don't I don't remember whose podcast uh, I, I saw it on. It was news podcast, I should say. It was uh, Brian or, or whatever. The point of it was, it was. A news story, uh, it's all in the show notes, by the way, from uh, the Fox 43 News in York, Pennsylvania. And the sh long and short of it is, they have at least one, I don't know how many, because I didn't, I didn't look that far into it, I didn't have enough time to all explain. They have uh, at least one religious club, specifically Christian, I don't know what the name of it was, where the students are allowed to have an early dismissal by like an hour to get out of school and bust over to wherever it is that they, they hold their thing. I think at uh, whatever church it is. So parent of one of the students got in touch with the Satanic Temple. and was just like, hey, uh, I'd love to see about uh, getting the uh, after school Satan club in here uh, as a direct comp competition. Which, by the way, for those of you that haven't looked, the After School Satan Club is T-S-C. Their letters are ass for the After School Satan. <laughs> well done, guys. Anyway, so yeah, apparently, apparently this, this took a while for it to finally simmer and bubble up to this point. And well, it finally hit the uh, it finally hit the the news. The accurate statement would be it finally took some idiot to notice because they weren't paying attention to anything going on that was important in a kid's life. They were just paying attention to, you know, what's going on in politics or some shit it's, instead of their kids. It's entirely possible, but basically the Satanic Temple basically said, okay, we're on the job, and they were ready to go ahead and get started with stuff, and they had all their materials ready to go, they had all their stuff, and a lot of the stuff in question, if you go over to the Satanic Temple's website and go look up the information for the, um, uh, the After School Satan Club, which is linked in the show notes, you will see most of the stuff is right there, so you can review it and see what it is that they do. The local community lost their collective minds. I'd have been out there supporting them. Yeah. I, under the auspice of being the, the owner of the account for Holy Crap the Vlogcast over there on YouTube, I got involved in a lot of the discussion. 
<laughs> Hence the reason why I said I did not have enough time to read and look up a whole bunch of inf their information because I was busy with these people going, oh, you're going to claim that um, th the Church of Satan and Anton LaVey are going to be coming into your school for sex magic and blood rituals. Uh-huh. Okay, first off, <laughs> numbnuts, you spelled Anton LaVey incorrectly. You spelled it the same way as a businessman, a young living businessman, as opposed to Anton LaVey, who created the Church of Satan in the 60s, a freaky Svengali-looking-like motherfucker, <laughs> which is a completely different group from the Satanic Temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you want to you wanna claim that they're going to come in for sex magic and blood rituals. Well, here are the passages from your Bible about how if a woman is not a virgin, she is to be stoned to death. And the one where Jesus says, this is my body and my blood given up for you. So... Who's got the blood rituals and the sex magic? Let's try this again, shall we? Oh, oh, but their precious little one is a virgin. They would never disgrace their body, you know, because their holy body is a temple for Jesus. It's entirely possible your little boy or girl has already tried fingering their own asses. Leave me alone about the whole day. I didn't say that. And, and, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that is your kink, go for it. That's perfectly because fine. You're not hurting anybody, but you're possibly yourself. Remember, kids, trim your fingernails. That's and and finger cuts are a really really important thing. Yes, finger cuts are definitely very important. very important. Now here is Peace. I. You don't want to impregnate your pinky. If you if you <laughs> if you look at the two YouTube links that are in there, I got into it with a number of people who obviously didn't know jack shit about the subject matter. Not a damn thing. And with the news reporting, which I will admit was fair, I think, was actually reasonably fair, I was not at all happy with the way that they recorded the uh, the school um, discussion that happened with it at the school board meeting, which that's a whole other thing unto itself. Because as as uh, Mr. LeVay, uh, sorry, as um, uh, Lucien put it, the fact that the school board held a vote, which was eight to one against, by the way, mm -hmm. one of the board members was smart. Anyway... Didn't so purpose. they find out what you're upset about. Yeah, well, now see What's that would have been about projection. Make sure it's the right group. You're even. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Ugh. You expect somebody who has zero tolerance for any other groups, people of different skin colors, of people just from a different part of the world. You know, uh, folks here. If you don't believe me, read the freaking Bible. Um, you expect a group that has. A, a, a holy book that is just filled with godly amounts, pun intended, of intolerance for anybody that is in any way, shape, or form different than you. Satanic temple and the to church actually of Satan do research. Are not the same. I know. It doesn't matter. Know. They're yes, different. They're not of the same tribe. Therefore, they're in the bad area. They're the degenerates you know yeah. it doesn't matter if they're with the church of satan the satanic temple the, uh, or anything for that matter they're a degenerate that's how they see it they have no tolerance so i went through i went at them and it was more fun because then i realized oh wait a minute i should take a look on the website for fox 43 and where is their contact information Okay, well, let's see. Do they have uh, social media links? They have social media links. So I followed oh, them over God. into Facebook, <laughs> and I found the Facebook post that has to do with the story. Oh, my ever 
loving father. You had a good time, didn't you? I was an absolute peach to these people. I was not insulting. I was not demeaning. I was not de a degenerate or a troll in any way, shape, or form. I challenged correctly by saying, amongst other things, oh, um, you say that uh, Satan is real. Uh, citation, please, uh, because if this really was a thing, everybody would know that this was already a thing. And I'm pretty sure that you can't prove it since it's not been proved in, uh, I don't know, uh, ever. And what was one of the other ones? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paraphrase this one just a little bit. These people do not see Satan as a real thing. It is a mythological creation. It is a literary character on the same as your Harry Jesus. Potter. And they are as afraid of Satan taking their soul as they are of Darth Vader coming to force choke them into unconsciousness. It's not going to happen because it's not real. As though, with you being uh, identifying as male, did they happen to threaten to gang rape you before they kill you or just threaten to kill you? Well, there were a number of people that, uh, that said... What the hell was that? My cat. Was that she your cat actually into the microphone? Yeah, she wasn't my attention. Okay, it's, that's it's something she does. That scared the ever living shit out of me for a second there. Sorry. A wild cat. It, it, she wants my attention. That's, fair. that's what she does. Anyway, so the 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 thing of it was, there were people who were posting publicly on these forums uh, publicly is kind of a misnomer because i mean youtube facebook they're they're not public entities they're they're private organizations but they're publicly they're not accessible. moderated is what you mean yeah claiming that um the one that voted yes on the school board amongst the nicer things were that they should be voted out and replaced or alternatively, removed in such a fashion as, uh, Joe, I think the expression is, uh, and, and I'm highly paraphrasing the way that people put it, a fine pink mist. Does, does, does that sound about right? Not really going to give me anything on this one. That's... Uh, I yeah. didn't read it, but that sounds, uh, that's pretty typical. Yeah. You know, for, for <sighs> loving Christians, they sure do talk a lot of violence. Yeah. And they perform a lot of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Stephanie's, it's amazing. Stephanie's got a point. If they voted against the Church of Satan, uh, well, th in this case, the Satanic Temple, remember, <laughs> Church of Satan is a different group. We don't like the Church of Satan. They're, no. um, they actually believe in Satan. They're weird. A bunch of posers. Yeah. They're they're weird. The Satanic Temple. Now, giving the benefit of the doubt for a second over here. Uh, yeah, well, I, I said that. Uh, if they voted against the Satanic Temple, that leaves the Satanic Temple free to carry on. Wait. If they voted against Church of Satan, that leaves the Satanic Temple free to carry on. Oh, okay. I got you. 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 They voted against the wrong organization. Yeah. I, that's like that's like saying, um, you know, we want to we want a football team here, and it can be anybody but the New York Giants, and then they vote out, you know, the, the Buffalo Bills. Braves. Right. Keep Portland. The Giants weird. can still show up because they weren't voted out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it's like keep Portland weird, and it's like, what do you have against Maine? It's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. So the, uh, the the terminology that was used for uh, some of these people who were all upset about it were less than complimentary, to put it nicely. The interactions that I had with people showed that easily 
90% did not have clue one about what the the after school Satan club is all about. They literally have no idea. Dude, because they listen to people like Ken Ham. Ken Ham doesn't understand light speed. Ken Ham doesn't understand that you don't start off your doctorate dissertation with my name is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I no, don't have a doctorate. Yeah. I've never been through a doctorate program and I know that that is like no. I I mean Ken Ham literally tried to tell people that a light year is only a measure of distance, not time. It's like, uh, no, you fool. It's a measure of both. Well, people. Yeah, locals here don't like the one school that has an international baccalaureate program because international baccalaureate, Agenda 21, New World Order. These international are... means something different than what we're used to in our tiny little community where we feel safe and secure and nobody has a different thought than us. Yeah, these, an these... IB program that makes locals here want to shut it down. Are these, also the, people that, are these yeah. also the people that get upset about the idea that uh, the concept that the kids are studying Arabic numerals? Numerals. Oh, yeah. I always laugh when I hear somebody who's uh, pissed off at we shouldn't have Arabic numerals. We should have American numerals. It's like, uh, there are no such things. We never it's created like, any. It's like, yeah, because using Roman numerals is just so much more practical when balancing your checkbook, right? <laughs> look, 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 look. You want... <laughs> You are nuts if you can't understand Roman numerals. N V T S nuts. nuts. You know what? Screw you, man. There, there is, there's a, there's a skit that was done by the Frantics. I'm going to make sure that it is linked, where they're trying to talk about a shopkeeper is using decimalized numbers, and the customer is just like, "What was wrong with our number system? It's completely simple. Why are you going ahead and switching over this?" Sir, that it's going to be 26, 26 drachma. How much is that in real numbers? XXVI. See, why didn't you just say XXVI? That makes perfect sense. If somebody else did a skit of, of switching from scrolls to books and having to do tech support I on that. how to read a book. I remember that. I mean, here, the schools tried to pass some kind of an anti-bullying program, hmm. which, I mean... And then they did. found out they were the bullies. <laughs> yeah. And so people people here, this was... I'm trying to think how long ago this was. Like, It was when my kid was still in like middle school. And they tried to pass some kind of an anti-bullying program because, you know, bullying is a pro your problem. And because that would force them to be nice to the gay people, no, it got pulled so they had no anti-bullying program because the parents shot, shot it down. Yeah. Yeah. We, rules for thee, not for me. Right. Yeah. yeah. And after Ripper gave them the uh, authority and ability to harass people who don't agree with their religious beliefs, and that meant that they could you know, bash on the gay people and stuff like that. No, we can't have any anti-bullying programs because we have a religious right to bully kids. Yeah, there's a mentality of um, yes. it's our religious right to basically oppress and hurt anything different than us, which is wrong. Yep, which and is why we wanted Lucian to come down here. <laughs> it, it's why I'm seeing so many young kids in my area who, you know, they don't want to engage in politics because they're tired of listening to those kinds of people. And I'm like, hey, you know, guys and gals here and other, listen, you want people to take you seriously. You've actually got to go up against those people. You've got to stand up against them. That means you have to take over their jobs and then demonstrate to the world, not just your local community, but everybody, what it is that needs to change. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, explain something that for us here in the United States, it's it, in a lot of cases, it's relatively well known in, in some cases in a bastardized version. But in the United States, the Constitution 
the federal constitution of the United States of America is, it is quite an impressive document considering how it started, but it was always meant to be something that evolved, that, that it changed, that it updated when things were either wrong or that it never fit the situation anymore. Now, was that necessarily by design? To a degree, yeah, but there is no way that the Founding Fathers, which we don't put them up on a pedestal, we revere them as people who were doing the damned best that they could, considering that they were forming an, an incredibly new, prospective country under the oppressive thumb of the greatest military strength of the day at an average age of about 25 years old. So, the First Amendment, which is the first change, the, the first update to the Constitution, is what is otherwise referred to as the freedom of speech. And it's a misnomer because there are actually quite a number of pieces in there in very small amount of space. But the, the very large portion of it that is responsible on this one is the part about freedom of religion. And the overall design of it was that the state, the terminology that was used at the time, is not supposed to be entwined into religion either as a beneficiary of assistance or detrimented by I'm not quite sure what the right term would be for it for uh, for 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 being repressed. Go with it that way. So government is not supposed to be in the business of religion. Now there are some that went to go ahead and some did use this argument on me that it's supposed to be the federal government level where this is not supposed to have happened, that they can't dictate what religion people are supposed to follow along, but we should have God in the classroom like we used to back in the 60s, and ever, ever since that, it's been downhill from there. First off, I'll just go ahead and I'll say, read my finger. Second, the state has basically come to be understood as the government, and understandably so. So public schools in the United States are government-run entities. They are not supposed to be in the they're not supposed to be in the business of saying what religion kids should be following, if any. So they're not supposed to be getting kids to pray. They're not supposed to be setting up and instituting religious anything with stuff. It, if the kids want to do it and they need somebody to watch over a grouping because they've got a club. That's allowed. But the teachers are not supposed to be the ones doing the any kind of indoctrination or proselytization. But if you let one group in, you have to let them all in. So it doesn't matter if it's folks yeah, who are Muslim, Jewish, or Satanists, or humanists, for instance. Well, not not humanists because that's not a uh, that's not a that's not a religious organization, religious right? What are you doing? Sorry. I... Anyway, so people in these communities are getting all kinds of you know bent out of shape because their whole thing with the First Amendment, they are trying to use that as a weird bludgeon to say that. Satan, the, the Church of Satan, is not a real church. No true Scotsman over there. Nice, nice job. By the way, yeah, they are recognized as a religious organization. They say that they're not going to be uh, talking about uh, Satan and teaching kids about Satan. Right, that's, that's, that's what it says in their paperwork. Whether you, whether you think otherwise is immaterial. Their paperwork says that this is what they're going to be teaching the kids. You want to come in and watch? I mean, that's perfectly fine. 
you're, they're also saying that they're going to be doing all kinds of weird stuff. And that. Well, don't forget, learning those Arabic numerals, that's kind of weird. And so many of them were basically of the. It's good for me, not for thee. God, meaning, meaning Yahweh, is the one God, is the one that we should be following. You all need to come to Jesus. And anything with the word Satan in it is just inherently wrong and bad and the deceiver and the whole thing. The best one that I had was somebody who said, well, why would they use the name Satan if they didn't believe in Satan? My answer to that was, and I'm wondering how good you guys are going to love this one. Captain Crunch Cereal is named after a fictitious personality. What's your point? After School Satan Club is named after a fictitious personality. Again, what's your point? So far, you know, uh, three days later, uh, upwards of three days later, I haven't gotten uh, any real, uh, any real answers to some of these things I pointed out to him. So, Joseph... Don't forget, you're arguing with a lot of people. That's true. That don't have the mental wherewithal to actually, you know, handle stuff like the concept that we're using Arabic numerals, that, you know, we have scientific thing uh, that almost everything that we've classified in science has Latin names that, you know, it, 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 they can't, the world doesn't exist outside their bubble. And if you try to make it their bubble bigger, they lose their collective minds. Oh, when they did. Joseph, that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that you're here for this one tonight. You're, your long-standing trope about people just need to be able to think for themselves, these kinds of absolutely incredibly reactionary, uh, emotional outbursts, I think I, I would think you of all of us have have got to be just leaning back, thinking about this and just going, what the hell is wrong with these people? And I'm wondering well, what you've you, got to say. Yeah, well, you just described it yourself. Um, what's wrong with these people? Well, these people are just uh, letting somebody else make all decisions for them. And they have really... Um, no moral map of their own. Everything is embarrassing for them. To anything that doesn't match to their from other people's nation. Um, I hear it a lot in uh, when you're listening to the atheist experience. To call in people to call in. What's really fascinating for me is just uh, the urge the, that some callers have if they don't like something that uh, they have to interrupt. They think that this like talk more somehow. Joseph, we're we're having a really hard time keeping you right at the moment. Okay, wait a second. Ah, uh, poor. Now I'm wondering if we've got something going on in the background again. <laughs> ah, okay. How's that? Yeah, seem to be okay at the moment. But, well, I've I've switched to push to talk again. Okay. Yeah, that's Thank better. You. All right, we'll see how this holds. Okay. So you were over with uh, uh, people calling into the atheist experience. Uh, they just keep shouting. Well, yeah, just the, the emotional response when, uh, you know, they call with uh, uh, quite often with a ready-made script and, you know, expecting uh, with 
the sort of gotcha and they're expecting a response and if the response isn't what they were expecting or what they were taught to expect um which is usually a, a straw man um yeah they get all panicked and uh it's really disturbing to hear the urgency sometimes and you know they absolutely have to shut whoever's up they, they like as if that's going to change reality you know changing or stopping the words of somebody else they it, they really think it's going to affect reality because somebody who has no moral map of their own all they have is uh what they were taught to compare to you know it's funny you put it that way because uh th this is now making me realize uh from what you're saying that a lot of these people would be probably highly influenced by the satanic panic from the 80s. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I saw that firsthand. Yeah, and and in a way, probably I, either themselves were were young. Oh, that's right. They, some of them might have been young enough that it would have left a really, really deep impression at the time because, I mean, traumatic stuff in youth has a way of holding on for a very, very long time. Um, I'd like to, um, when I say moral map, um, if somebody transitions to autonomous thought, they start to build, I, I get the impression anyways, this is to be tested, but uh, I get the impression that we begin to, to build an actual map of reality in our own brains. And we compare everything you know, we're eventually with time building that map. And um, whenever we learn something new or hear something new, we're going to compare to that, compare to reality, test it. If it checks out, we're going to add it to our map. And our map gets bigger and bigger as we progress through life. But for people who don't make that transition, they have nothing to compare to. They only have the... Uh, I, can I go so far as to say that uh, they really have no concept of reality? <laughs> that sounds a bit extreme, but... Um... You know what? I don't think that it is. Considering how how quickly these people just... just took on the... I, I, I can't say it any other way. The, the actual satanic panic as, like, what we saw in the 70s and 80s, that, you know, they... It was a complete knee-jerk reaction of um, word bad. Yeah, I mean, that's it. just just as simple as that. So I, yeah. I don't, I don't think that you're, I don't think that you're overstating it at all. Yeah, but I think you know this this um, <clears throat> this transition. I mean, it takes a lot of work to have an accurate map of reality. You know. Um, and at the base, I think humans tend to be, well, if somebody's going to do all the work for you, why not? Part of the problem that I've got, though, is that it's, yeah, it's easy to just sit back, but I, I think something, th this level of reaction, I think is very much an a long-term indoctrination thing more than anything else. Well, that's how it starts. And that indoctrination does its all to keep this transition from happening. That's... And once you're stuck, there's something, this has, this has to be, um, this is tied into neuroscience as well, because it's, it's an established fact that around adolescence, um, there's a huge remapping going on in the brain that happens just after adolescence and they call that pruning whereas uh, the brain decides what's useful and what's not you know and starts uh, rewiring basically so um, how somebody's going to spend the rest of their life is going to spend the rest of their life in 
cognitive servitude to somebody else or are they going to take the responsibility uh, themselves and in the past maybe this one or the other pattern was beneficial to uh, human survival because you know uh, you'd have a few making all the decisions like for example hunting parties and things like that I don't I, I don't know I'm still looking into this but um, yeah nowadays uh, well There's a lot of people who would like us to depend on them for uh, our decision making, telling us what's the best product to buy, for example. It's not only religion. Joey, I want to get you in on this uh, at, at this point, because there is a there is a piece about this that I've alluded to, but I haven't directly hit on to as yet. The the school board vote on this, which again. Reminding you, the fact that the school board was voting on this was in and of itself an absolute travesty that shouldn't have happened in the first place. But the school board vote was eight to one against allowing the club in, with one person specifically voting, obviously, yes. So here's my question for you, because what do you think is going to happen? When the school district's lawyer comes in and says, uh, guys, this is going to cost you a lot of money and you're going to lose. Or maybe I... I think the school board's going to fight it back anyway. Uh, the people are going to fight back anyway. And let it go to court. They don't care. Well, considering that I saw a, a number of posts about uh, the community members need to get together to get a GoFundMe for lawyers and whatnot. Yeah, they're not going to let the law deter them. Yeah, it's definitely funny. I didn't realize, but uh, Joe had stepped away for a, a couple of moments. I, I apologize. The... The boom arm that I have for my microphone is actually right in the pathway of uh, being able to see my second monitor, which is, oh, well, would you look at that? Right where all the text that we use host-wise, you'd think I'd actually figure a way of, you know, make, making that easier for me to see. But, oh, no, no, wh why would I ever do something silly like that? That would be wrong. I'm just, I'm just going to say that, you know, legally, you know, what DeSantis pulled... And, you know, the legislature down in Florida pulled with Disney. That's illegal as hell, but they did it anyway. Okay, really quickly explain that one, because uh, that, that that's one that there is a tie-in between these that I want to hit. Yeah, um, down in Florida, uh, Governor DeSantis, you know, passed this, you know, don't say gay bill, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, Disney, which is like one of the largest employers in that state. If not the largest. If not the largest employer of that state, you know, stood up and said, you know, this bill is wrong and it's going to harm people who are LBGTQ+. That includes our employees. And so we have to speak out against this law. It's harmful. So because they had the nerve to come out publicly as a corporation and say, no, you can't do this, this is harmful, then he's like, fine. Uh, this, you know, 50-plus year lease that you've had to run your own infrastructure, uh, you don't get that anymore. We're just going to take that away and uh, screw you. And that's illegal because constitutionally you cannot punish someone for stating a political, you know, position. And that's exactly what he did. He retaliated against them. So, you know, they're, of course, you're going to have to try to take it to court and sue. But, you know, this is going to cost Disney a lot of money and a lot of tourism. But in turn, it's also going to hurt Florida because the taxes that Disney was paying, um, now their taxpayers are going to have to pick up that burden. And so it's going to screw their tourism. I mean, Florida just screwed themselves. Yep. As an aside, Beth, 
good morning on so uh yeah i'm, I'm assuming that uh you would hear it about all this too beth now like i was saying there is a there is a link between these two which is the oh god now now i'm on, i've put myself on the spot i'm trying to remember what the what the legal terminology is for it it's um malicious prosecution yeah and if memory serves uh, malicious prosecution when it's proved is not viewed very favorably by the courts no it's not but the the hard thing is proving it because these guys are this is disingenuous as fuck well yeah. because they're gonna say well we don't like Wait, your view oh. but they'll they'll find it's always another reason than the real reason there mm -hmm. well now, now see that uh, that would be true if the governor had been smart and kept his goddamned mouth shut but he just couldn't he ran his mouth he said exactly what he shouldn't have said he outlined exactly what was going to have happen as punishment for going against the governor's will. And he did exactly what he threatened he was going to do. And it was exactly the kind of ammunition that any decent prosecutor should look at and go, yeah, uh, you should have shut your hell. You should have shut your whore mouth, you dumbass. Now, um, now what are we going to do? You're going to pay me yeah. a lot of money so that I can mitigate as best I can. And it's going to be a very large amount of money and you're still going to lose. Yeah, I mean, that could happen. I mean, it just depends on, you know, which judge happens to hear the case, though. You know, what circuit it goes to as to how they will vote. Because the fix is in in a lot of circuits now. We're starting to see it. There is that. There is you that. You know, like this farce that we saw with Marjorie Three Toes yesterday, <laughs> you know, committing perjury left and right. Nothing's going to happen to her. Okay, the two, there's two things. You you calling a Marjorie Three Toes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. They could have gotten her for perjury right then and there, but nothing is going to happen to her. What What's behind Marjorie Three Toes? <laughs> what does that come from? <laughs> three Toes, three names, Marjorie Trailer Park, whatever you want to call her. Okay. Well, I I wonder if that came from her shooting herself in the... Marjorie Three Names. Marjorie Trader Green. She's... Uh... A very large thorn in everyone's side. Yeah, that I actually suffered through all of that hearing yesterday. Oh my god. And perjured herself openly, saying, I never said blah blah blah, here's videotape of it. Oh, and, you meant that. And she's like, oh, well that was spliced. You can see that this was spliced here and blah blah blah. Uh, nothing's going to happen to her. Not a damn thing. I mean, of course, you know, they're not going to knock her off the ballot because that would hurt, you know, Raspensker's re-election chances and all that other stuff. You know, but they still could have gotten her on perjury because she perjured herself several times, obviously. I mean, if it was there in front of the judge, eh, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, if it, it's it's all show acting. I know the United States is known as one of the most litigious countries in the world, if not the most. But you know, if people did what they were supposed to do, if they had some understanding of the law of civics in this country and were actually brought up to follow the damned rules because the rules exist for everybody 
I really kind of wonder if, you know, this country would actually be, well, more living up to its ideal as opposed to the lowest common denominator. If the rule of law applied, yeah, that would help. But it no longer does. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious now, especially if you happen to be cis, white, het, wealthy. The law does not apply to you equally. It never has, but it's even more obvious now. Yeah, there's a couple items over here in uh, in the... Oh, I'm sorry. Joseph? Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, even if the law applies, well... Um, getting somebody to apply it is another step yeah somebody that's actually got the stones to do it uh yeah like arresting somebody who ties their horse to a parking meter in new york city it's illegal well, i would be happy with just arresting some people who obviously obviously tried like hell to pull a coup I know. Start with somebody. I know. I know. Uh, like Meadows or Kevin McCarthy or just somebody. For the chat, uh, Stephanie's pointed out, uh, Bo stated that he has met Disney lawyers and piranhas have more empathy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Disney lawyers are pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah, they have gone after ugly. people that uh, don't deserve it, and they've gone tooth and nail. So yeah. when there is somebody that deserves it, yeah, uh, be after yeah it's, that's going to be interesting. They and, paid the big bucks for a reason. Yep. And Beth is uh, reminded, uh, remember, the hearing had nothing to do with January 6th. This is whether she is able to run again. Good point. Forget about that. You're right. But still, if you commit perjury under oath, that's still supposed to be a punishable offense. Regardless of what the reason for the hearing is. But... I just think she needs to be charged for perjury because she flat out committed perjury several times. And it was evident when she said, well, I never said so. And then there's videotape of it saying exactly what she said. No, I got you. I'm, I'm kind of wondering when... Even in traffic court, you get punished for perjury. Yeah, but when when does that get levied against you? Like, in the moment? Or at the conclusion of the trial that you do it in? That, I'm not sure. But there should be charges for that. Because, like I said, even if you went to small claims court or traffic court, if you committed perjury after taking an oath, it doesn't matter what the hearing's for. Perjury is not allowed. Fair. Period. No, I, you, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's just, a, it's just a question in my head procedurally of when they're allowed to levy that to you. I don't know, but I bet it doesn't happen. I really hope that you're wrong, but I'm I really I'm afraid that too. you're right. Yeah. Be there as it may. All right. Okay, so, I got it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah. I gotta get I gotta get going. Something's come up. Go. I will catch you all later. Have a good night. Take care of yourself, man. Thanks. No problem. All right, so sadly Joey is going to have to say a good night. I will reorganize everybody on the screen, so there we are. And then there were four. The um The thing with the Satanic Temple, and I don't think that we—I uh, don't think that we touched on this in particular uh, as yet. The Satanic Temple we've talked about on several occasions. Uh, a long time ago, we had, um, oh God, what the hell was his name? Reap. Reap Payton. Reap Payton. Uh, yeah, his, uh, you know, official name is Daniel Payton. You know, since I had to start doing the real name on Facebook, but yeah, he goes by Reap. He used to do the Reap So podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Satanic Temple is, I think it is fair to say, 
a good organization. It's fair to call them troll-ish. Not exactly trolls, but troll-ish. They go ahead and they are humanists. They do not believe in, as somebody put it, the occult. They don't believe in the supernatural. They view Satan as a literary figure, a mascot. And when there have been times where the law has obviously been done improperly in conjunction with some kind of religious uh better than thouism they come in they kick down the door and they 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 go ahead they look around and they announce themselves and they're just like hot damn that's the rule you want to use i'd like to use that rule too thank you very much you want to go ahead and have a nativity scene on on the on the porch of the town hall cool that means that we can go ahead and bring in our Baphomet to sit on the opposite side, right? Right? You know, shit like that. Which, by the way, I would love to have a Baphomet statue on the front of my property. I think that would be really cool. I think I'll let you borrow it for a fee. I think it cost them like $10,000 to construct it. Mm. But it is, you know, transportable. <laughs> Yeah, the downside is, I live out in the sticks. I don't think anybody would really notice it as much. Probably wouldn't, and it'd probably cost, you know, quite a bit to rent it yeah. for an occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Although I have dreamed about getting myself a really good paint gun and all those uh, Trump 2020 flags that are still up around in the areas where I live. I'd really like to be able to paint all those suckers at night, but, you know, that would be wrong. So I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'd like to too, but that would get me uh, a, you know, arrested in a jail record. I don't need that. Yeah. But these guys don't do stuff like that. No. Like I said, they come in and they they use the they use the rules against. They use exactly the rules. They 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 find out what the rule is. For Christmas, you want to have a nativity scene in the rotunda of City Hall. That is a religious uh, icon. You're putting it into government property. We are recognized religion. We would like to put ours up because there's space for it. And we're following exactly the same rules as you are. What do you mean we're not allowed to? Your rules say it. The law says it. What are you going to do? Take them all down, put them all up, or lose in court? Take your pick. Rules for thee, not for me. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, they definitely get attention when they do it. <laughs> they, they do. And yeah. they're great at it because when they go out, <laughs> when they go out to do it, they go out there knowing that they're in the right. Yep. And, and that people are going to lose their shit. <laughs> they're going to lose their shit and they're going to lose a lot of money. They're going to lose a lot of money. I can't wait to follow up on this story uh, and, and find out what ends up happening. I can't wait to find out from the news agencies what the lawyer has to say for the district. because Even if it doesn't go in the way you think it will? Uh, because either way, either either one of two things is going to happen. Either the school district's lawyer is going to say, yes, we'll fight it. Knowing what we know, we know full well. There's no way that they can win. Or they're going to turn around, they're going to tell the district, D -d -d you can't win this. The least, yeah. the best you can do is either allow them in or ban all religious clubs entirely. Yep. Maybe they'll probably ban all religious clubs because, you know, they'd rather see the earth burn than admit any somebody different. Okay, global warming is a different thing. We're not talking about that tonight. 
that's can come, that can come up sooner or later, but that's, that's um, not for tonight. But the church and state separation thing, um, you know, the case that was going on in Washington State with the, you know, the coach that was Don't doing f- the prayers at the football games and all that stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. We yeah, did, it's we did a show again. Yeah, we did. We did a show on that. Yeah, and it looks like there's a good chance that that may be allowed because of the makeup of the court now that is has jurisdiction. Yeah, I'm 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 waiting on that one too. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't remember, that one was uh, again out in Washington State. I was on with um, Becky and Sam over at um, Ath- uh, Ask an Atheist in Washington a long time ago uh, for their episode. The name of the episode was Era Dust. I remember that because uh, I don't remember how far back it was. Now, for us, we had Era Dust Part 2 where we had Becky come on to talk about that. The idea that this thing is still stretching out absolutely astounds me to no end. And that he may actually win this time is just, I don't know what to say. Yeah, and Beth has brought up an interesting point, and one that hurts. P is off the wall, anything goes. We can't count on the courts anymore. No, we can't. You know, this concerns me. This part really concerns me. America is a relatively young country. Relatively young. There are a number of countries that are far and away older, have longer histories, and when... When I read and I internalize, we can't count on the courts anymore. The first thing that I think of, believe it or not, goes over to you, Joseph. Because when the populace lost confidence and trust in the government, which was, well, uh, a king at the time, Robespierre went ahead and um, made sure that everybody was created equal under the blade, didn't he? He may still be gone. He had a... See, again, again, I've got the thing over there. I didn't even see that the... This is what happens. All right. Yeah, I I, I have lost confidence in the courts myself. And it's a terrifying place to be. Yeah. And I'm still waiting to see what's going to happen with... uh, This is kind of related to all of this is you know the air force has made the decision which i don't know how they're going to implement it because it's a whole can of worms where because you know states like texas and florida you know are clearly hostile to anybody who's you know gay straight you know binary trans any of that openly hostile to them so the floor uh so the the Air Force has come out and said, well, we will protect our troops. And, you know, if they happen to be, you know, trans or gay or, you know, anything like that, or their children, then we will move them and put them, you know, station them elsewhere in a non-hostile state. But the, the, what's going to be really messy with this, though, is if you've ever had to deal with any kind of bureaucracy... And, you know, I did a stint at CBPO a long time ago, which is the central base for, you know, personnel offices. But what they do is all the administrative stuff of, you know, where people get orders and having to, you know, ship other people to fill those slots and all that. Every time that comes up, that's going to be a readiness issue. Because if they... You know, if somebody's stationed in California and then they get orders to go to Texas and then they say, well, I can't go to Texas because I'm gay, I'm not safe there, then they have to shuffle them to another base, find someone to take the slot that was going to take that person's slot, and it it's a domino effect. Okay, yeah. Or I, I, I what you. happens if they happen to move a family to Florida 
And then their kid comes up. They're like 14 or 15. Says mom, dad, or mom or dad. I've got something to tell you that I need to talk to you about. That's a problem and they have to let their chain of command know. Well, my kid just came out and they're gay or they're trans or whatever. And so then has to work up the chain of command and then they have to get orders and get relocated. And then they have to have somebody else to take their place and do the whole shuffle thing. What the hell is that going to look like? How are they going to track all of this? Are you going to have to do like a yearly questionnaire to give what your sexuality is and how you identify? And can you can you imagine the mess that that would cause? So and again, the, the if they do this, who are causing the problems don't care. The people who are causing the problems don't care. But if the other armed forces follow suit with what the Air Force is doing and decide to protect their people, then what I would do if I was, you know, at the Pentagon or, you know, chief of staff or whatever, I would start shutting down some military bases in those places and hit them in the economy. And I can tell you that when bases shut down, the local economy tanks. Oh, yeah. And I would love to see that happen. Yeah. You know, Florida's got a bunch of Air Force bases inside of Texas. Now I'd love to see them start going up. Well, we're going to uh, shut down the base and we're going to move all of our personnel to these other bases. That won't happen. It won't happen, but I would love to see it. Problem with it ha uh, actually happening is financial. And since that's controlled at the Pentagon at Washington DC level the they'll make sure that the funding is just not available for it to happen but how are they going to protect these people i mean air force has already given you know said that they will protect well, they these may people. just roll back the whole thing about accepting people who are gay no air force will not do that well, air force might not but you know the others might and I mean, again, they, they may just tell them, they may just tell them, well, you know, you're just going to have to tough it out. You're used to toughing out worse things than this. Uh, tough it out. I, I'm not saying. Air that... Force won't do that, though. They're the ones who came forward and said, we will protect you. And if we need to give you orders somewhere else, we will send you somewhere else. Right. And that's what the, the, the D.C. people are going to say is just keep doing that. Doesn't matter. He's They're wasteful thought. with money. They're wasteful with our troops. They're wasteful with everything. Okay? If they weren't wasteful for with taxes, all right, and they didn't uh, do a bunch of other complicated bullshit like allowing, you know, the top 1% have the best uh, tax rebates and all that other shit, we'd have so much spare money lying around. We could have another branch of the military and provide affordable housing for everybody at the same time. I'm just saying that if these laws in these other states is impacting military readiness, that's a, that's that's a huge issue. Not in the eyes of the people who make the laws. No, but military readiness is a security issue. It is the number one security issue. And I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I understand. I work with the military for crying out loud. But I think that they need to make this abundantly clear that you assholes that are pushing these, you know, bigoted laws are putting us at national security risk. They don't care. You could say it till you're blue in the face and the others will just, they'll say something that sounds like they care, but it doesn't commit to actually caring about another human being who doesn't toe the line with their narrow worldview. And that is what the very young generation is currently seeing. Isn't... You're seeing a bunch of old people in positions of authority not give a shit. Here's, a, here's, here's kind of a thought that was running through my head. What about, and, and follow me on this just for a second, you can't close down bases. You can't technically leave them over, but yet move all of their personnel out, effectively turning it into a ghost town, although it on paper it's still really active, even if it's not. However, 
what about this possibility? You keep these people completely on base. You don't you don't have them leave the base because it's effectively federal property and is under the jurisdiction for the Fed, not the state government per se. Because, I mean, you, you want to get in there, you got to get past the MPs. And generally speaking, the MPs aren't going to let you. That That's going to protect them. Yes. But the problem is morale at that point. No, no, no. I, 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 no, I, I get you, but let, let me, let me finish this one out a second. The kids are protected. The kids are given the, I, I, I say kids, but it doesn't matter who it is at what age that they're transitioning one way or the other. Anyway, they stay in the area where it is safe for them. They get done with whatever their transition is in a safe environment where the state can't go after them. The transition is finished. However, you know, I, I have no idea how long the entirety of that lasts. They're adults, one would hope, at this point. What happens as far as the law is concerned as a trans as a person who is transitioned what what do these fiasco laws end up looking like for these people are they allowed are they able to be in you know out, outside of federal protection and be considered actual, like, people? Or do they have to leave looking over their shoulder the entire time for somebody that's going to go, you're, you're trans. You're, you're illegal. There's a woman that I know, a trans woman. I met her uh, just before the pandemic. And she's terrified people. I don't blame her. She's, she's essentially got PTSD. Don't blame she's her. absolutely terrified because she watches all the laws being made and everything else, and I guarantee she's being terrified right now, too. She has lost three different jobs the moment, the moment the company found out she was trans. Yep. And they were all in at-will states, so they just fired her. They didn't tell her why they were firing her. They just let her go, right? Yep. And... Her family abandoned her as well. Uh, there will be no names mentioned or anything. And the hits just identity. keep on coming. And, and I guarantee you, you know, that anybody who experiences something like that, I'm not saying this is true for her. I'm saying this can be true for any human being on the planet who has lost their family and keeps losing jobs because of who they physically are something beyond their control you know yep. there is no safe space the base oh gee yeah no that that's not going to help that might help them through a very small period of their life but that is not going to help them for the rest of their life the ukraine the, the, the ukrainian people thought they were safe and then russia can't nah hold our beer and so what's going to happen with the concept of the base, it might work for a little bit, but you'll get the politicians, the, the die in the wool uh, fundamentalists in pol into politics who start taking away certain laws. Maybe they'll start affecting and reaching out to the insurances that cover our men and women in military and in government and have them enact what is and is not covered under insurance. And when you consider how little a military man or woman or, well, military service member makes to begin with, unless they get really high up, suddenly they don't have any coverage for that transition 
surgery or their kid. You know, it it's one of those things where it's nice. It's nice to think that. But like having religion represented in school, it's got to be all or nothing. If we can't represent, you know, different people all over the U.S., then no offense, but people announcing their heterosexuality should be banned. Yeah. And in Indiana, when Pence was still governor here, um, you know, uh, it's an at-will state anyway. But, yeah, I mean, people would be fired because... You know, being, you know, gay, a, a sexual orientation or a gender identification or any of that, that was not protected, you know, for EEOC or anything. And there were a couple of cities who decided, well, at least within our county or our jurisdiction or our city limits, you cannot discriminate on the basis of, you know, gender, you know, race, sex, sexual orientation, any of that. And then Pence passed a law and said, you cannot have any exceptions. This is a state thing, and you don't have the jurisdiction to dictate otherwise. Religious fundamentalism at its yep. greatest. Yep. In politics, where it's not supposed to be. Yep. In writing, it's not supposed to be there. And yet it's still happening. Yep. Kind of like when they were questioning the, the Supreme Court judge to be about how much, how often she went to church. Yeah. It's like, you're not supposed to have a religious test, knucklehead. Yep. But that's that's when it really hit home to me was when, you know, places like Marion County and some, you know, other places were making it, you know, a, a local thing where you cannot discriminate on the basis of, you know, gender, sexual orientation or any of that. And Pence was like, oh, yes, we can. And you don't have the jurisdiction to make any local laws that are different than what we have at the state level. So, yeah, he killed it. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie was pointing out uh, in the 60s, uh, the frontline RAF base my father served at shut down and moved in a week. Obviously, the planning must have been going on for months, but that's what people saw. Yeah. Yeah. military organization i mean the the level of bureaucracy is ab absolutely staggering uh plus uh frontline raf uh in the 60s i mean this would have been what give or take 15 almost 20 years after the war at that point i'm pretty sure that the writing would have been on the wall and they would have been like you know what we don't need as much at this point let's go ahead and roll back scale back reallocate and you know, put the money in, in better locations and it, it would make complete perfect sense there and oh, i did have a funny random thing that popped that not random but it is tied into taste the satanic temple that i have to circle back to real quick i'm sorry to interrupt you but i almost forgotten it's almost good show time is over uh there was a weird clip that came out on russian state tv how uh you know, the military here was all satanic and um, that we had, they called it the Temple of Satan. They got the name wrong, but the Temple of Satan uh, is influencing our military and we're evil and brought up the Salem witch trials and Salem, Massachusetts and all that. And I was like, what the hell? And did some digging on it. And where they got that from is the satanic temple is taking up donations to help people in Ukraine who are members of the Satanic Temple to get out safely. Nice. And because the Satanic Temple is raising funds to help Ukrainians who are temple members, <laughs> the Russian state media got a hold of that and ran with it. And are you kidding? It. I'm surprised Fox News hasn't ran with it. They ran with it. And I was like, what the hell does this have to do with Salem, Massachusetts? And the witch trials and did some looking and it's like, oh, the t Satanic Temple was founded in Salem, Massachusetts. That was the tie-in. I was like, okay. Okay, uh, backtracking then. Uh, Beth pointed out I was demoted at Wendy's because they found out I was gay. Granted, that was 35 yep. years ago. Um, a... Dearly sorry that that happened in the first place. B, 35 years ago. God, the, the difference in attitude. 1990s. 
the difference in attitude is 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 amazing to me to look at it yeah. now um and stephanie uh i don't know if anybody saw my reaction but uh, stephanie had put uh, no the entire base moved two squadrons of vulcans and all the families moved about 100 miles uh okay i i take back what i said that's kind of impressive What's interesting about the military is that once all the paperwork is said and done, when they're organized and they got their mission ready to go, oh yeah, they move. Yeah, they they every branch has a methodology for picking up everything and being gone the next day. But it's, it's impressive just the lead up to it that takes. It, yes, the lead up to it takes it's different times for different uh, branches. Um, different preparations based on their skills, you know, their, and their focus and everything else. But they all have the ability to pack up and move faster than a zergling rush. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good reference right there. That's good. And it's it's accurate, too. Yeah, you know? I, no argument. <laughs> it's, it's really accurate. And, um, yeah, you know, the, the thing about what you said, could they pack up base and yeah could they protect people oh definitely the military is um they're, they're highly capable at both protecting people and killing people you know that's what they're for that's their two jobs either protect kill or both that that that's what we have them for you know that's what we ask of our men and women and other in the service and sure. it's immature to shy away from that by the way uh, to think, oh no, we're, they're just in the protection business. It's like, <laughs> how do you think that occurs? Anyway, uh, the point is, is that it might make the difference for a little bit, but the fundamentalists have the power because nobody has actively stripped them. Yeah, they're, but I would love that's to see what has happened. But I would love to see Disney pull out of Florida altogether and say, screw you, and go somewhere else. And I would love to see Eglin Air Force Base do the same. That would crater. Really funny to see. Disney that would crater their night whole night. economy right there between the military and tourism. That would fuck them. I would love to see some consequences for their actions that hard. Let's see where 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 could we move them? Okay. Well, um, you look that up. At, we're 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 like right on the right on the cusp of being like way over time. Uh, Joseph, uh, was there was there anything that uh, you wanted to drop in at at the moment? Because you you've had very little time to to talk on this one. Unfortunately, and I'm I'm afraid that I might have like missed over you because couldn't get in or anything. No you guys are talking about stuff <clears throat> yeah you're a little more up to date on that's uh, recent events than i am but <clears throat> today here in france like today uh, we're we're having the problem hearing you again i don't know if you've got really the... i'm pushing to speak okay you it can't was... hear me well it was yeah, it we was now. crackling in and out again but uh, go ahead. Jesus. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, today's election day. Oh yeah. Good so, luck on that. Uh, it's between the extreme right and the extreme <laughs> extreme center, if that exists. Yeah. Uh, but I think Macron will win out. So. I hope so. And we all hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, complete aside, uh, for what it's worth, hey, hey, Disney, look, there is a uh, uh, there's a Six Flags up here in New York State. It's in a nice spot. It's got some 
really good open areas. You could conceivably buy a whole bunch of area and, and additional to, you know, expand into. And you would have, you know, a good portion of New York and a lot of international travelers that would come through. So Sterling Renaissance Festival isn't too far away, really, when all is said and done. You might want to consider New York because, you know, get some snow and have a little bit of fun. Be interesting. You could actually have Elsa do her thing and be upset. Just a thought. I don't know. Just... You know what that would do for New York's economy? That would be huge. Yep. And we've got weed now. So, you know. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Um... I don't even I don't I don't even know uh, where to where to finish off with. Uh, you guys got anything that you want to finish off with? Because uh, I'm I'm actually believe it or not trying to figure out what what encompasses all of what I've still got in my head. I don't know. It's just it's just it's too much. It's 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 just a it's it's just a big tangled freaking web again, isn't it? Yes, and we should not even be here. No, I mean, uh, legally, constitutionally, any of it, we should not even be here. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to close out my part with this. The rule is clear. The law is clear. Lucian, for all of his pomposity, if you want to call it that, is right. School board screwed up. They have failed their populace. And the kids are going to be the ones who are going to end up paying the price. I'm going to keep watch for this particular news story because I am really, really interested to see how the population is going to deal with this. Because it's just a slow-moving train wreck. And the worst part of it is this impact started easy 15 years ago. These people have been failed by the system that was supposed to help educate them. And the whole thing's just going to fall apart because of it. Tech, you got anything that you want to close out of with on a, on a quick? Because I, I, I'm... I'm believe it or not for a change I'm actually getting disgusted the more I'm thinking about this tonight um I, I think you're right to be disgusted I'm disgusted with my country how we uh, have been treating our own people for the last you know, decade and longer I mean in reality and honestly I don't think it's going to change without a fight and a bloody one at that. So, I really you know. hope that that doesn't happen, but at the same time, that's hard to argue. Yeah, it is hard to argue. I mean, we're looking at what's going on uh, sociopolitically right now, and it's a match for... A lot of things throughout history that resulted in the equivalent of having breakdown in government, breakdown in society, another freaking war, people fighting each other, reestablishing government, the whole nine yards. Um, and, you know, there are people out there being warned, hey, look, you know, 
be active. This is what's going on. And they're like, oh, that'll never happen. This country, blah, blah, blah. We're so full of ourselves. We are so full of ourselves that we have a giant branch of our community here in the U.S. that actively refuse to move forward on anything. You know, that, and they're literally trying to drag everybody backward. And it's a huge number. This is not like a small group. It's a huge number of people actively oh. trying to drag everybody else down and out. You know, the whole crab in a crab pot thing. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'm ashamed. <laughs> I'm ashamed to call myself an American. I, I understand that. Joseph, anything that... Um, I mean, I know, yes, I asked you before, but I mean, uh, as far as to like uh, closing on, on thoughts on anything? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Um, yeah, well, keep resisting. Remember the, that these uh, evangelicals... Uh, those who would want to decide for the rest of us. They're a minority. They may make a lot of noise, but they're a minority. So. Well, see you next week. That's fair. And, uh, Bridget, I'm assuming that you pretty well got everything out at this point, yeah? Six and a half months to shut this shit down. That's our last chance. People need to take this seriously. No argue for me. Um, because if the GOP take back Congress, they've already told us what they will do. And I believe them. And if you don't believe them... You haven't been paying attention. I think the only thing I can add to that is there's an expression. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. So with that, we're going to go ahead and call it a night for everything. As always... Thank you, everybody, for being with us. We hope that you found something worthwhile in all of our perspectives and you got something to think about for the week ahead. Appreciate you being with us. Uh, please don't do that. Woo! So, over on the chat, Felis, Beth, Stephanie, guys, thank you very much. You guys take care of yourselves, huh? You know, we, we, we worry about you collectively so you know just be careful out there joseph glad you're able to make it you take care of yourself and um happy voting today only once though remember only one vote yeah well i can't vote not yet or maybe not even uh, that, for the then. next election <laughs> you take care sir appreciate it tech you, yep. um, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say it. So help me. I will come over there and I will hit you with a dope slap the next time I have that pull start engine pulling through your microphone <laughs> and pegging my volume meters again. I, uh, it, you know, it is my fault. I taught her how to do that because uh, she's my son's cat. And uh, so when we do video games and every once in a while, she'll come up, nudge the microphone while she's purring to get attention. <laughs> it's, she's she's a motorboat. It would be cute and adorable if it wasn't just okay. Here's the volume meter. There's the red line. Oh, dude, you should have you should have heard it uh, back no. when I used to use my boom directional microphone. Um, 
you remember when I used to use that Telex one and pick up everything in my general vicinity of my face. Oh man, she came through like, you know, a chainsaw through a bullhorn. Well, at least she just purrs and doesn't like pee on your foot to get your yeah, attention. No, no, no. To get my attention meows at me she jumps on me she purrs and and if i don't give attention back she will bite it's not like you didn't yeah. deserve it ferrets used to do that to me too <laughs> yeah but she does this bite where it's not hard enough to break skin and then she'll look at me like go ahead do something about it i dare you <laughs> it's cat the hell you expect you exactly. try to have yourself a safe week ahead thanks for being able you to too. make it man you take care of yourself huh? of course you guys do the same. Bridget, it's that time again. You know, I hate this part of the night because, um, as they used to call it, every week, man, you've got a bigger and bigger, bigger target rich bigger environment. Mist. Oh, I don't even. I don't even know when to pick. Just Kevin McCarthy just what the fuck, man? That's not a bad start right there though. I mean it it is bad, but I mean I mean, it... You have the chance to impeach the guy. You knew this was a fucking coup, man. And there's now audio tapes of the phone calls. Fuck you. I'm going to add one on to, uh, on, onto that really quickly. Anybody who is a news collector, a news reporter, a journalist, an investigator who sat on relevant information. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, fuck you. Sell some fucking books. Fuck you too. About it? Uh, that's about it, I think. So with that, we'll call it a night. Thank you all. We will be looking forward to t talking to you again next week. As always, if you want to be in touch with us, Take a swing over to holycrapthevlogcast.com. We've got all of our contact information over there, including, amongst other things, the download for the audio version of the podcast if you want it. Phone number, if you want to use it, is 859-HCTV-554-859-428-8554. Please stay safe. Stay healthy. Please, if you can, be vaccinated. Mask up. Do whatever the hell it is that you can do to keep yourself safe. And at the risk of having a complete outcry from Bridget, please remember, breathing, atomized, um, uh, rubbing alcohol or, or hydrogen peroxide is not a way of keeping COVID out of your lungs. It is, however, a really good way of making sure that you don't have to get any diseases because you'll end up dead if you're not careful. Don't do that. <laughs> so, so the next time we get together, everyone, as always, I wish you the peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well, my lady. It's coming up again next month. I am still in love with you. Matane Fujin. I love you. I miss you. Dream of me. And until the next time we get together, everyone, as always, good night.